Good morning, everyone. I'd like to ask everyone, please take your seats and come to order. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone and uh, hereby call to order the Escambia County Planning Zoning Board uh, for January 10th. And we do have a quorum. Uh, all of our board members are present with the exception of uh, Mr. Sammons and um, Mr. Sammons has turned in his resignation to the board, so um, the uh, commissioners will look for a replacement for his position, but uh, uh, publicly on record, I'd like to thank uh, Gary for all of his hard work on the board, and uh, he told me he was going to go play some pickleball, so have fun playing pickleball. So at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you. Um, staff members, do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. Okay, and does that publication meet all of the legal requirements? Yes, sir. Chair will entertain a motion to waive the reading of that legal. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The rezoning meeting minutes from the previous uh, meeting were pro provided to everyone. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to approve. Moved. Second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The rezoning hearing package for January 10th with the findings of facts has been previously provided to all the board members. The chair will now entertain a motion to accept that rezoning hearing package with the findings of facts and the legal advertisement into evidence. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The rezoning hearing package with the findings of facts and the legal advertisement will be marked and included for the record in today's case. At this time, we'll ask the court reporter to please swear in the members of staff that will be testifying. All right, thank you. Board members, you've previously qualified these individuals uh, to offer expert testimony in the area of land use and planning. Do any of you have any questions regarding their qualifications or their ability to offer that testimony? All right, hearing none, the record will reflect that these individuals are experts in the area of land use and planning. And uh, we have a unique situation that happens sometimes because we have a small scale amendment. We will, uh, I'm going to read in the quasi-judicial uh, statement explaining how the process works, but then we'll put this hearing um, in recess and we'll jump over to the small-scale amendment, which has to be handled first before we come back to the rezoning uh, case. So just bear with me while I get all of our uh, legalese on the, on the books here. At this hearing, the Planning Board is acting under its authority to hear and make recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners on rezoning applications. These hearings are quasi-judicial in nature. <coughs> quasi-judicial hearings are like evidentiary hearings in a court of law, however, it is less formal. All testimony will be given under oath, and anyone testifying before the Planning Board may be subject to cross-examination. All documents and exhibits that the Planning Board considers are considered entered into evidence and made part of the record. Opinion testimony will be limited to experts and closing arguments will be limited to the evidence in the record. Before making our decision, the Planning Board will consider the relevant testimony, the exhibits entered into evidence, and the applicable laws. Each individual who wishes to address the Planning Board must complete a speaker request form located at the back of the chambers. You will not be allowed to speak unless you have completed one of these forms. Please also note that only those individuals who give testimony today on the record at this hearing for the Planning Board will be allowed to speak at the subsequent hearing before the BCC. No new evidence can be uh, presented to the BCC, therefore all testimony and evidence must be presented today. The Planning Board will provide a recommendation for each rezoning request to the BCC. 
They will then review the testimony, the documents, exhibits, consider the closing arguments, and make a final decision. All decisions by the BCC are final. Anyone who wishes to seek judicial review of that decision must do so in a court of competent jurisdiction within 30 days that the BCC either approves or rejects the recommended order of the planning board. All written or oral communications outside of this hearing with members of the planning board regarding matters under consideration today are considered ex parte communications. Ex parte communications are presumed prejudicial under Florida law and must be disclosed as provided in BCC Resolution 9613. As each case is heard, the chair will ask that board members have been involved in any ex parte communication, explain that uh, communication, and identify it. Rezoning criteria, as required by Section 2-7.2 of the Escambia County Land Development Code, the Planning Board's recommendation to the BCC shall include consideration of the following approval conditions. Approval conditions, the applicant has the burden of presenting competent substantial evidence to the Board establishing that the requested zoning district would contribute to or result in logical and orderly a development pattern. The appropriate surrounding area within, within which uses and conditions must be considered may vary with those uses and conditions and is not necessarily the same as the required area for the mailed notifications. A logical and orderly pattern shall require demonstration of each of the following conditions. The first one is consistent with the comprehensive plan. The proposed rezoning is consistent with the future land use flu category as prescribed in LDC Chapter 3 and with all other applicable goals, objectives, and policies of that comprehensive plan. If the rezoning is required to properly enact a proposed flu map amendment, transmitted, it will be transmitted to the state agency for review. The proposed zoning is consistent with the proposed flu, flu and conditional to its adoption. And that's what's happening today with the small scale. Consistent with zoning district provisions, the proposed zoning is consistent with the purpose and intent and with any other zoning established provisions prescribed by the proposed district in the chapter. Compatibility with surroundings, all of the permitted uses for the proposed rezoning, not just the anticipated by the rezoning applicant, are compatible as defined in Chapter 6 with the surrounding uses. The uses of any surrounding undeveloped land shall be considered the permitted uses of the applicable district. Compatibility is not considered with potential conditional uses or with any non-conforming or unapproved uses. Also, in establishing the compatibility of a residential use, there is no additional burden to demonstrate the compatibility of specific residents or activities that are currently protected by fair housing laws. Appropriate if spot zoning, where the proposed zoning would establish or reinforce a condition of spot zoning as defined in Chapter 6, the isolated district would nevertheless be transitional in character between the adjoining districts or the differences within those districts would be minor or sufficiently noted excuse me, sufficiently limited. The extent of these mitigating characteristics or conditions demonstrates an appropriate site-specific balance of interest between the isolated district and the adjoining lands. And finally, appropriate with changed or changing conditions. If the land uses or development conditions within the area surrounding the property of the rezoning have changed, the changes are to such a degree in character that it's in the public's best interest to allow those new uses, densities, or intensities in the area through the rezoning, and the permitted uses of the proposed district are appropriate and not premature for the area or likely to contribute to sprawl. At the beginning of each case, as long as there are no objections from the applicant, we will allow the staff to briefly present location and zoning maps and photography of the property. Then we'll hear from the applicant and any witnesses that they may wish to call. Then we'll hear from the staff and any witnesses they may wish to call. 
And finally, we will hear from members of the public that have completed a speaker request form. So we have one case today, and as I said, we're going to, at this time, put our quasi-judicial hearings in recess so that we can go over and address the small-scale amendment. So I'm going to hereby put us into recess for a few minutes, and we will hereby officially call to order the regular planning board meeting for January 10th. And on this meeting, staff members, do we have proof of publication? Yes, sir. Okay. And does that publication meet all of the legal requirements? Yes, sir. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion to waive the reading of the legal on this meeting. Okay. Motion, second. 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 All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Board members, on the regular planning board, you've been presented with uh, previous board meeting minutes. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes to those previous meeting minutes? Hearing none, Chair will entertain a motion to accept. So moved. Motion, do we second. have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The planning board hearing package for January 10th has, um, excuse me, Planning board pack. Okay. Planning board package for uh, January 10th has previously been provided to each of you. The chair will entertain a motion to accept that planning board hearing package and the legal advertisement into evidence. So moved. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Anyone opposed? All right. Motion carries. At this time, we'll ask uh, staff members to lead us on case. Z202301, which is a public hearing, and who will be leading the, all right, good morning, sir, if you'll state your name and position for the record. John Fisher, Development Services Department, Senior Planner. Um, this project, SSA202301, this is a, um, so this is a county-owned property, so Development Services Department will be the agent for the county um, as going through this process here. Um, if we want to go ahead and start with the maps here to get everyone familiar with the site and what the zoning is, and we, then we go into staff find, or the analysis. So as you see here, this is the location of the map. This is uh, currently a park just right up the street north of here on Palafox. Um, it's got multiple um, zoning on it, recreational and HDMU. The future land use, which will be this um, SSA um, amendment here is MUU for the mixed-use urban, commercial down the middle there, and recreational on the east and south side of the property. Um, what the Schema County is looking to is to make this a more conforming lot um, with zoning, and this uh, would be making everything into public. Um, this is a CRA map. This is also in the Palafox overlay. This is the aerial map showing all the multiple parcels that are currently there in the park as well. This is the public, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a public hearing sign looking east from Northwest Palafox Parkway. This is looking west from Northwest Palafox Parkway. <coughs> this is looking north along North Palafox Street. Looking south along North Palafox Street. This is looking west from North Palafox Street. And this is looking southeast from Jacqueline Way and looking west along Jacqueline Way and looking south along Hanson Boulevard and looking north along Hanson Boulevard. Right. We had a lot of photos. There was multiple four corners, so we make sure we got um, signs posted on all four sides there since it was covered with right away on all four sides. Um, if it's okay with uh, chair and board, you'd go over staff analysis? Yep, that'll be fine. Okay, thank you. All right, again, this is a small-scale proposed future land use map for Excamia County proposing to change three-acre parcel from recreational, commercial, and mixed-use urban to public. The subject property zone commercial is currently vacant in a wooded parcel. The parcel is adjacent to the parcel zone rec and HDMU. The current commercial zoning is intended for professional offices, retail, wholesale services, general business trade. Um, it also has a maximum residential density of 25 dwelling units per acre. 
The mixed use urban that is currently on the property is intended for a mix of residential, non-residential uses while promoting compatible infill and separation of urban and suburban land within the category as a whole um, with a density of 25 dwelling acres as well. The recreational um, is intended for recreational opportunities for county citizens, including a system of public and private park facilities. Recreational has no density allowed. Uh, no new residential development is allowed either. For the proposal of public, the proposed public provides for uses or facilities owned or managed by the federal, state, or county government or other public institutions or agencies. Public also has no density allowed as well. This also allows for parks, local, regional, state um, facilities as is currently on the property. Um, under the Land Development Code for the future land use map amendment requirements, um, there's a compliance review um, under general amendments of conditions of the comprehensive plan. The analysis was a conversion to public would provide a correct future land use zoning for a recreational area and allow the county to develop a site for the future uses that are related to government or public institutions or agencies. Under professional practices, the analysis of the existing future land use for the area is commercial. Mixed use urban and recreational, a change to public would allow for the recreational area while providing more flexibility for government or other public institutions or agency uses. Um, under the future land use amendment conditions, um, there's also the proposed amendment complies with all three conditions established by the Florida State Statute of 163 for the adoption of any small scale uh, comprehensive map amendment. The subject parcel is three acres, um, is used, as long as it's 50 acres or less, this is compatible, which it is. <clears throat> Under the comprehensive plan objectives and policies of housing, um, the proposed public future land use would be a substitute replacement for the existing future land use category and result will not allow for any intense uses and would decrease the allowable density that is currently allowed by the surrounding area in the current future land use. Under the future land use map designation, the future land use category in the area are commercial recreational and mixed use urban which support a mix of residential and non-residential development. The change to the public would not change the area characteristics while allowing the existing park to be conforming and allowing for government uses in a central location in a urban environment. Under infrastructure, adequate infrastructure, the Schema County maps include documentation of the general availability of infrastructure by Emerald Coast ECUA, Emerald Coast Utility Authorities. Um, under concurrency management for portable water, sanitary sewer, solid waste, and um, ECUA is the provider for portable water and sanitary sewer and solid waste in that area. Um, under stormwater management plan and transportation mobility, um, the TTO staff analysis reviewed the rezoning case and the small scale map amendment for this site. Um, the Cedric parcel has a frontage along North Palafox Street, SR 95 North Palafox Street is a six lane facility with paved bike lanes and grass median. The travel lanes are approximately 12 feet wide. The right of way with this section of the North Palafox is approximately 115 feet in the vicinity of the property. The Florida Department of Transportation has a resurfacing project currently underway for this section of North Palafox Street. And the North Palafox Street is functionally classified as a principal urban arterial roadway with a FDOT of 2021 volume of 25,000 average annual daily traffic. TT has no traffic capacity concerns relating to North Palafox Street. A proposed site plan shows potential driveway connections to Jacqueline Way and Hanson Boulevard. Both of these are considered local streets with less than 3,000 vehicles per day. Each street features two lanes, approximately 10 feet wide, 20 feet of road wide. Jacqueline Way recently resurfaced in the vicinity of the subject property. TTO has no traffic capacity concerns relating Jacqueline Way nor Hanson Boulevard. Um, number four, protected resources, wetlands. Uh, the subject pro property is outside of any wellhead protection areas. Under historical significance, the property are currently developed as a county park and vacant. Prior to any future development, historical analysis and site-specific surveys must be completed. Wetland and habitat and urban forest. 
There are no indications from the available national wetland maps in any wetlands. If any of the protected trees are located on the future for new development, they will be analyzed for compliance with all applicable environmental regulations prior to any issues of a development plan approval. And with that, that includes the staff analysis for this um, case. All right, thank you, John. Um, board members, questions? So just, I guess in simple terms, the county is proposing to make this change just to bring it into compliance with the, with the flu map? So it's, <clears throat> it's actually two things. One is to make it compliance, um, and the second is also for the future development of a tax collector's office possibly. That is, the county has gone through a pre-application only at this time. Um, this would be the first step in order to make that happen. Okay. And this doesn't make much difference to the case itself, but um, it seems like the area has kind of become a homeless camp at this point. I, when I drive by there, I see a lot of you tents can see it, that's and a things place like that. Where they, yes, um, you can see a lot of homeless there every once in a while. Okay. Um, morning, horse. Good morning, sweat me in. <coughs> Okay, uh, Connie, please. Thank you. Well, he needs to be uh, yeah, sworn in. Um, he wasn't in the room. He wasn't, wasn't in, in the, the room, room, so. I do. I do affirm. Thank you. Um, Horace, and, and I, before yeah. you get started, please introduce yourself. Yeah. My name is Horace Jones. As you can see, I don't know my left from my right. <laughs> But uh, my name is Horace Jones. I'm the director for the Development Service Department. Also, too, we do have, I would like to just state for the record, we do have the assistant uh, 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 county administrator here as well. As, as John stated so well, this is a public project. It's owned, the property is owned by the county. And, and, and you, 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 you stated, um, yes, it's, it has turned to a, a, a place where Many of the homeless go there, go there, and basically and and and, and put tents there. But it is not a, not an approved homeless encampment. I want to be clear for the record. <coughs> they, they go there and they they lodge there, and, and I'm, I'm I'm just stating that for the record. And we do have we do have if you want to open up one up for the public, we do have some people here that's work with the homeless as well. Okay, um, board members, before we open it up for some public comment, we do have several speakers. Any additional questions of Horace or the staff? <coughs> All right, we're going to go into public comment on this, and this section of the meeting, um, as I said, is not quasi-judicial at this point, so you're not sworn in. <coughs> Excuse me, but when we go over to the um, to the rezoning request, you would be sworn in for that. So um, I know some of you want to speak in in both hearings. So we'll start with Mr. Tim Barnes. Good morning, sir. Good morning. In this case, you don't have to be sworn in, but when you come back up later for the quasi digestion, you will. But go ahead with your comments, sir. Okay. Um, I work for the Hands and Feet of Jesus Ministry. Um, we do a lot of, of ministry uh, help throughout the whole county. Um, but um, the one thing that I wanted to talk about today is the park. Uh, the park is very central to what we do, even though we work from Molino to downtown. But by where it is, it's the perfect location for us to um, meet with people and do some of the things that we do. And so um, I, I don't want people messing with the park okay I don't want you know we've heard a lot of talk this morning about blue and code and change and NMR and okay whatever all right but the bottom line is is if you know our main concern is the inch and mile principle that we all know exists in life okay so if they put a tax collector's office in the basketball courts maybe a year from now they put something else somewhere else over there so that's our biggest concern is that we don't want people messing with 
the main place where we do all of our ministry. The things that we do there, we give backpacks to kids when they go to school, we, we give food to people, we give clothes to people, we cut people's hair, um, and we meet with a lot of other, and there's a lot of other ministries that meet there too. It's not just the homeless ministry. There's a lot of other things that are done there too. There's a church service that's held there on Sunday. There's people that feed the whole community and have food for everybody. So the, the park is used for many, many, many reasons. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys understood that this morning, that it isn't just a place where there's a couple swing sets and then nobody uses it. We use the park almost every day. Okay, we feed on Tuesdays because Washburn is closed on Tuesdays. And so a lot of the homeless don't have a place where they can go and get any water or any food. And so that's why we pick Tuesday. But there's people that feed on Monday. There's people that feed on Wednesday. And then the church service is Sunday. Um, uh, make sure I got everything in my notes here. Uh, that, that's, that's basically the, the crooks of what I was trying to say is that we do use the park a lot. And, so. and, and the facility, Washburn, that you mentioned, it's kind of across the street and down the road a little bit on, on the right is, down it's there. directly across the street, kind of a little bit more north. Right. And because it's such a wonderful place, it's one of the few places where people, where the homeless can go. And so that's what's so important to the park. And I want to say something about the homeless encampment in the park. There's nobody that encamps in the park. That's a completely false statement. There's one guy who can't walk who's over there right now. And then every once in a while, you'll see a tent there. But I've been going there for years, and there's, there isn't a whole bunch of homeless people there in any way, shape, or form. Okay, and we, don't, we don't use it for that at all because they know they can't do that. All right, We use it as a central meeting spot to meet people in the, in the community. So that's, that's the main thing that we do there. So they have to come from somewhere else, wherever their camp is or wherever they are. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Thank you. And thank you for the work that you do. That's very important in the community. <coughs> Michael, Michael Kimber. Michelle, I'm sorry. Michael, Michael. It's hard to read. Good morning, um, Michael Kimbrell. I live at 6200 East Shore Drive um, here in uh, Scambia County. Um, I was wanting to have this parcel brought up to uh, speak uh, of the parcel, but um, I am not against rezoning and unifying the map um, here. I am more for unifying it as a, a recreational park. Um, it is what it's been used for. If you look over, I'm going to step aside. I'll try to project my voice so y'all can hear me. If you see over here, the area that they are saying is <coughs> meant for like residential, like is what it's zoned for now, currently has children's playground equipment and part of a track that goes around the entire lot. Um, it, uh, and so the entire thing is used as a recreational park. Um, the area that's zoned recreational has the basketball courts and a big field um, where people have picnics and whatnot, but then the other zoned area is, is the children's playground equipment. There's a gazebo, and, and so I, I think it would be better suited to just unify the whole thing as, as a, a public park in a, a recreational area because um, if we rezone it public, we're going to lose the park. We're going to lose a public green space um, and exchange for yet another government building. And I know y'all are y'all are all about like building government buildings and stuff, but let's let's do it somewhere else that that isn't losing a park for our community. Um, that park is very active. There is events that take place there all the time. Um, it, it is something that's part of our community, and I'd really hate to lose it. Thank y'all. Thank you. 
Good morning. Thank you, Chairman Brisky. Happy New Year, everybody. Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Boblets. I'm going to talk fast because there's a lot to get in, but the thing I want to highlight, um, number one, is that I love Michael Kimbrell. He has my heart. He is a hero in this community. And despite all the crap he takes, he keeps putting one foot in front of the other and is the truest friend to the downtrodden and the people that don't have a ceiling over their heads, which is most of the people in this room, count your next two paychecks, go without them, guess what? You've got a good chance of being homeless. I think that Horace um, is thinking of Beggs Lane, and I and it's, a, it's an easy thing to, to make a mistake on. There aren't tents on this property. Um, Beggs Lane, unfortunately, has people on it again because when the city cleared out from underneath the bridge, uh, some homeless advocates and some officials from the city drove them right into the county and dropped them off in various locations, and, and homeless advocates are still scrambling to clean up after that. Um, I'm a friend to homeless. I'm a friend to parks. I've spent a lot of money, blood, sweat, and tears on each issue, mostly banging my head against a wall and getting absolutely nowhere, but I will never stop trying. My advocates, both environmental and homeless, have been asking me, why am I not raising a clamor about this park? Because Kevin and I sat for hours and hours and hours over years while they talked about trying to find a place for a tax office. And I also understand, and, and that this, this has been in the mix for years, and I know a done deal when I see one, and I'm not gonna blow my powder on it, but what I am gonna do is beg this planning board to come up with a way to send to a recommendation to the BCC, which they can take or they cannot take. You guys know better than I do how that goes. Keep a portion of this broken out as a park. There's a lot of room here. It doesn't mean all the park space has to get blown away. There's room for a tax office. There's room for a community center. There's room for a, for a park. There's, there's plenty of uh, ways to integrate possible shelter space in an emergency, which we needed so desperately when we hit that cold snap that the county was pretty unprepared for without relying on private agencies. So this is an opportunity for the county to do a low impact, environmentally friendly building. Don't take the trees down. They're in clumps on this property. There is no reason to take any of these heritage trees down and actually face the fact that the homeless are members of this community. Oh, people going to do their taxes might have to look at some people that are poor. Hmm, yeah, maybe that's not gonna be a bad lesson for some people. And there is a way to do this right that can serve many different purposes. The county can knock it out of the park, but I think the planning board should make the recommendation on sort of just metaphorically speaking what a mixed use public and private could be on here. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pino. Skidmore Albert. I was just going to say that my Albert Skidmore, that we're part of that church service on Sunday and we use the park and been there for two years now. It's a fantastic place. I know there's a few homeless people around, uh, but uh, we try to help them best we can. We, we love them. You don't want it to happen to them, you know what I'm saying? They have nowhere else to go. Now, my question today is she was saying about the trees. What about those oak trees? Aren't they protected here in Scambia County? I just thought in my mind. And, and, and I'm not fully sure. What are you planning on taking? Can't the park exist? Can't we still have the north side of the park? I mean, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what you propose. It hasn't been explained to me. But that would be a question. Can't the two exist together? Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Child's Park over there, you really, I've been there a lot of times, but you really rarely see people, their children, there playing on them. Sometimes, but it's very rare. Mainly, I know there's a lot of homeless thing out there, but still. We don't want you to run us off because we've uh, got to live here in Scambia County too, okay? And thank you all for listening to me. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Chair, if yes. I, I'll just make charter just just from the pre-application. What you know, there is the conversation of keeping the north, and I'll kind of put my cursor over them. The playground area, these three parcels here, and maybe three and a half of them. They're still working out the details yet, but that playground area and stuff would remain at this time in those trees and everything. Okay, so the 
The proposed, I know it's pre-application, but for the proposed building would be up near Palafox and then that remaining area back there would? Correct, Palafox and actually, you know, it would be this area here too, which would be, you know, looking to vacate this area possibly. So all this would be, you know, turn into, you know, some type of building, parking lot, you know, anything. Yes, and th thank you, John. Uh, Horace Jones again. Thank you, John. Yes, um, all of the department heads, uh, we we are we are along with the assistant county administrator and 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 various other administrative level. We are looking at all of those things, as John stated. We've had a pre-application meeting. Our parks director, uh, uh, our the uh, our director of the buildings facility. So all of those things, we are definitely looking at it. We just got to do step one at this time, get it zoned public, and then then we can proceed. But again, those things are in discussion, have been in discussion. We there there were even meetings with the public, with with the citizens of the area, <coughs> and which and which and all of those things will continue. So so we are looking at all of those concerns which have been brought up today, and this, and staff is working towards a hearing and addressing those issues that we can. We don't want to overpromise anything, but we do hear the concerns of what is stated, what have been stated today. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Horace, um, is the reason that it, it, the request for zoning to go to public is because that's the only way to build a public facility on this site? Yes, to make it, to make it, to make it more easier, more, more challenging, complying with the land development code comply with all of the county regulations per se. Without having to go through various other steps, the public does allow for parks as well as as well as governmental spaces. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I know you're, you said there's discussions about keeping <clears throat> green space in place for this. Um, is there a way at this level for us to request that be included in this type of project moving <coughs> forward as something that we would like to see? It's I mean, you've got an elementary school across the street. Those, um, yes. You've got folks here saying they use the park on a regular basis. Yes. Um, and <clears throat> you, I mean, I'm looking at this neighborhood. I know this neighborhood continues to go further. I don't see a park in sight but this one. So I think, you know, having some sort of amenity like that in this neighborhood would probably be beneficial. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Walker. Again, our parks director and, and, and all of the governmental officials, we the site plan that have been submitted, the pre-application assignment, all of those things, they are, they are being considered, being looked at, and have been discussed. So we are, we are definitely not ignoring anything that has not been discussed, because we have those same concerns as well as the director of planning and zoning. When this came up, we've had thorough and many conversations, and we yet is having conversations again. And thank you. I was just going to call Ms. Debbie up to the front, so she must have been reading my mind. <laughs> Hi, Debbie Bowers, <clears throat> Assistant County Administrator of Infrastructure Welcome. and Public Good Safety. Good morning. We did have some public meetings. There is a park nearby. I can't tell you exactly where it is, um, a neighborhood park. But we met with all of these neighbors. We met with the principal of the elementary school. Uh, so we've talked to a lot. And we are also partnering with the church. So they're actually helping us with some land issues for some uh, for the drive-through component of this, but using partnering them with them allows us to a we never meant to or never designed anything that would cut down any of the heritage trees or any of the bigger trees that are not heritage. Um, also, it allowed us to put a playground in the back so that the neighbors would have it available for children. Okay, thank you. Yes, go ahead. Read. Um, would you, um, so Roslyn Way and North Pal Northwest Palafox, would those be abandoned and, and changed to one parcel? And also the you know parcel that is on Roslyn Way, the far eastern Ro Roslyn Way, looking at Scammon County property price, it doesn't look like it has any, an owner. What, I don't understand how all that, you know, because you've got the, you get the three parcels to the north, or four parcels to the north and just south of it until you hit the church is blank from ownership. Is that a right of way? Yes. Okay, so all that would be basically um, <coughs> merged into this one parcel? Correct. Okay. And the, I'm assuming the roads would be, then be abandoned yes, and no yes, longer. We're yes, we're vacating it all. Yeah. It's technically already been vacated, the middle part. Okay. 
Okay, well, I'm very happy to hear that the county is uh, considering all these things, especially what we've heard the testimony from all these individuals this morning. So I, uh, I just want everyone to know it's outside of the purview of the planning board to, ask, to do some of the things that you're asking for, but we certainly can show our support for them and recommend, highly recommend to the commissioners that those things happen. Uh, which is what my wishes would be because I fully support uh, the efforts that are going on there. So um, we just heard from uh, high-level county staff that they are doing that. So uh, I'd like to – I'm sorry? Let's be, let's, let's be <coughs> mindful of the decorum that we must address. Again, this is, this is a legislative process. All of those concerns, they can be brought up again at the next level to, to the board. We've had, we've had, we've, we, again, let me finish, please. They can be addressed. You, you, had, you had the deputy assistant county administrator. She's very, very good. She, she hearing us. She hearing everything. There have been meetings now. Now, there have been meetings, and the possibility will continue to be more meaning once it's go to the, to the next level at this stage. So now, when the quasi rezoning come to the next stage, if you don't speak at this meeting, you can't speak, at the BCC meeting when it comes to the rezoning. But all of these concerns they was already addressed, so we don't have to have. Be going be bantering back and forth. We can let the board make their decision and proceed. Okay. We do have um, another speaker that has signed up. We want to give due process. Uh, Mr. Todd uh, Burnett, uh, veterinarian. Morning, sir. Morning. <clears throat> so I had initially not planned to speak at this meeting. I wanted to listen in. I was at the neighborhood meeting, by the way where they describe the actual build out, the proposed plan, the whole nine yards. And uh, I do own the uh, Brentwood Animal Hospital immediately north to the uh, park, okay? And what I'd like to represent is at the neighborhood meeting, they did in fact discuss the plan with preservation of the heritage trees. They did um, also discuss uh, development of a park with uh, playground material, things of that nature, in addition to the build of the, pro of the project. So mostly what I'd like to get up here, and, and um, hopefully I'll be coherent with this, I'd like to uh, say that nothing is being represented with the impact of the area and the neighborhood, okay? And the impact of the neighborhood and the area has been significant. Um, <clears throat> most of my young ladies, most of my employees are young ladies in their 20, mid-20s, things of that nature. Many of them are single. Many of them have kids. And they come in, and they, they come in before we open, and they close after I leave, they also come in on weekends to do animal care seven days a week. They have been threatened, harassed, intimidated. I have been as well. This is all a ripple effect of the park, okay? When I moved down here 20 years ago, the park was devoid of any structures other than an old tennis court and a few trees, those heritage trees we speak of. Um, ever since the build out to the benefit of the neighborhood, it has never benefited the neighborhood. It has benefited everybody else, okay? They had, um, they put the benches in, the pavilions, the, the playground equipment, things of that nature, and it immediately became an anchor zone for the homeless, okay? And when I'm talking about homeless, I'm not without sympathy, I'm not without empathy, but also there's a number of these, these people that I encounter on a regular basis that one are semi-dangerous, dangerous to themselves, but also this is their lifestyle, okay? This is not... Thank you. With a good percentage of them that I've met, they're not down on their luck. This is the lifestyle that they've chosen, okay? And I don't think the neighborhood should bear the impact of that, okay? So I hope you would take that into consideration as well. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Kevin Ward, Wade, I'm sorry, Kevin Wade, sir. Good morning. Thank, thank you for fitting me in last minute, sir. Oh, Kevin Wade, 413 Southeast Boblets. Oh. 
and honestly, no one graduates high school with the plan of being homeless. Oh, talk to these people. Everyone has dreams. We all have dreams. And uh, leaving the children of this area or any area with dreams of having a park close by or a good place to walk. This is not a good place to be walking in this county. Oh, I feel for a lot of the people that get there. Oh, and basically I'm trying to get on the record so I can speak again later, sir, thank you. Oh, but I, I'd love to see community centers. Oh, I need to see more parks. Oh, and you stop pick, picking on Rosalinds and Rosalind Lanes and so on. Um, there's plenty of Jacqueline Lanes or Jacquelines to pick on. Um, and I, I often, I often rail at the criteria for notification of close residents. I, I'm, I'm just stymied, um, and. We've had things go on in Navy Point that, oh, because you lived across the street, you wouldn't be notified because you weren't technically abutting. Oh, I, and, <coughs> and the things that happen here, you, uh, making a tent illegal is as bad as making a blanket illegal. <laughs> and Pensacola has uh, put itself in international spotlight for criminalizing carrying a blanket downtown. Um, let's not criminalize homelessness. And, and really, really, like the people that are doing outreach and good things for people that go here, um, if they have to be moved, where to? And, and, and like was said earlier, this is unequidistant space for outreach. Oh, just, that's a gem. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, is there anyone else that hasn't spoke that wishes to speak on, uh, on our small scale amendment? All right, I'm gonna hereby close the public comment uh, portion of this hearing. Now, those of you that have signed up to also speak on the rezoning, if uh, this is passed, You'll have an opportunity to speak again on the record uh, at that hearing, but we have to decide on this case first. Uh, board members, discussion, or is anyone ready to make a motion? Just to clarify, Chair, can you answer the question, if they have already spoken in this case, must they speak in the actual rezoning case to speak at the BCC? Ask you your question, it. Mr. Pierce. If they speak on this particular item, they still can speak on this particular item at in the board member. If they do not speak on the rezoning that's coming up next, they cannot speak on the rezoning at the BCC. But yes, in this particular, you can speak here on this item, or you can, or you don't, if you want to speak there on this particular item, so yeah. you can but not the rezoning. So the commissioners will take them as two separate items yes, is what you're saying. You have an opportunity to speak just like here. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Just needed that clarified for okay. All right. Board members, more discussion, comments, questions? Okay. Is anyone ready to make a motion on this or do we need more testimony from staff or... I make a motion to approve uh, SSA 2023-01. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Second, discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously to recommend approval of SSA 2023. As I noted before that it does have to go to uh, Tallahassee State Agency for review, is that correct? No, the small scale, since because they are under, scale. yeah, okay. they do not, only large scales. Okay, all right. So uh, it would go, the next step of approval on this case would be the BCC, 
and all of you would have an opportunity to speak at that case as well. Oh, February so, 2nd. <clears throat> yes. I'm sorry? February 2nd. February 2nd, Groundhog Day. Okay. All right. So um, we're now going to put the regular planning board uh, meeting into recess because we do have another case that we'll have to address on that agenda. But uh, we'll go back into – I'll call back to order our quasi-judicial hearing – and as you all know, when we go into quasi-judicial, everyone is under oath and must testify under oath. And before we go into the case, I need to ask, uh, this is case Z202301, Escambia County Development Services Department, which is the agent for the county who is the owner, 511 North Palafox Street, approximately three acres, recreation district uh, to... Um, and HDMU to public, uh, and we've already heard some testimony in the other hearing as to why this is going on. Members of the board, I'll ask if there's been any ex parte communication between you and the applicant, agents, attorneys, witnesses, fellow planning board members, or anyone from the general public prior to this hearing. I've asked if you have visited the subject property, Disclose if you are a relative or business associate of any of the applicants, agents, or any of the parties. And at this time, uh, good morning, Steve. Good morning. No to all. Okay. Thank you. Uh, William? No to all besides I go by it twice, three times a day. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman, no to all, but I'm very familiar with the site. No to all. No to all. No to all. No to all except for um, I get paid a $50 stipend for the Scammy County property. Planning board. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but the attorney's not laughing, Reed, so, you know. <laughs> okay, staff, was notice of hearing sent to all interested parties? Yes, sir. Okay, and was it also properly posted on the subject property? Yes, sir. Okay, and as we always do, uh, we'd like, again, to present... The maps and photography since this is on the record and part of the record so if you'll uh, go with that john sure again this is john fisher development services senior planner this um, is a schemia county property um, development services is the agent for the county so again this is the rezoning case now um, you can see the location and wetlands map there there are no wetlands on the property so this is the zoning map. You can see where it's recreational on the east side and HDMU on the west side. This is the future land use map um, showing the recreational and commercial and mixed use urban. This would be the proposed future land use if the SSA 2023-01 is approved. This um, is the Powell Fox redevelopment area map. This is showing the aerial map. And here are the public hearing signs looking um, east from Northwest Powell Fox Parkway, looking west, northwest Powell Fox Parkway, looking north along North Powell Fox Street, looking south along North Powell Fox Street, looking west from North Powell Fox Street, looking southeast from Jacqueline Way, looking west along Jacqueline Way, looking south along Hanson Boulevard, Looking north along Hanson Boulevard. Now, again, that is all the photography and maps. Um, just for the record, we did post a sign on all four sides since it is has right away on all four sides of the property. Any questions or comments about the maps or anything? Board members, no. Okay. Hearing none, go ahead, John, okay. with the uh, findings, please. Um, and just for the record, um, this, the rezoning, um, they have had a pre-application. It's very preliminary conceptual um, of what they have, you know, discussed and what they're trying to propose. Um, a rezoning is not site plan specific. It cannot be voted on to a site plan or the use. This is about what the rezoning allows on the property. Right. And, and while we're on that, before you go into your findings, um, 
since that has been done by the county, uh, is that available to the public for review? I mean, I know it's a pre-application, but is any of that public information? Not at this time. They're still, it's so conceptual. I think at the, in best interest until we can listen to the people um, and get something out, we can work out every okay. detail. I just wanted to see if there was anything that everyone could see. You know, we'd obviously want to share yeah. that as soon as possible. Yeah. But if it's, it's not ready yet, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, rezoning Z2023-01 at 51 North Palafox Parkway. Um, the rezoning request from recreational and HDMU to public. Um, public has zero uh, dwelling units per acre. No residential is allowed. Under the comprehensive plan of Section A, um, under the findings, the proposed amendment is to public is consistent with the intent and purpose of the future land use category public as stated in the future land use section 1.3.1. The current future land use change from recreational, commercial, and mixed use urban to public is part of a small scale map amendment, SSA 2023-01, and will be heard at the Board of County Commissioners on February 2nd, 2023. As shown in the backup material in the packet, the parcels will use the existing roads and infrastructure. Any future development must go through the development review process and meet all the current standards. Under criteria B in the Land Development Code, the proposed amendment to rezone to public is consist consistent with the intent and purpose of the Land Development Code. The applicant is requesting public zoning designation for six parcels totaling three acres. The current zoning for the parcel is recreational, um, which is zero dwelling units per acre, and HDMU, which is 25 dwelling units per acre. There are no residential uses allowed within the public zoning district. Parcels in the area have already established non-residential uses, such as an existing park, school across Palafox Street, and as well as a church to the south of the property. The public is establishes appropriate areas in land use regulations for government agencies and public institution uses within urban areas. The primary intent of this district is to establish appropriate areas in land use regulations for publicly owned parcels with public uses generally having greater potential of adverse off-site impacts. Under criteria C, compatible with surrounding uses, the proposed amendment is compatible with the surrounding existing residential uses in the area. Within 500 feet of the radius, staff identified within the zoning district, HDMU and commercial, the existing use is along Palfox Street are a mix of non-residential uses, a church and a school. To the other surrounding areas, immediate, immediate to the subject area is also considered residential. There is a predominantly residential pattern to the west. Under criteria D, appropriate to spot zoning, it is determined that the proposed public zoning would be considered spot zoning based on the definition and request a rezone from HDMU to commercial to public will make the parcels consistent with the future land use of public. The public zoning would be compatible with the residential properties and commercial properties in the area that are already developed as transitional zoning and a public government agency need for the community. Under criteria E, appropriate with change of conditions, the land uses or development conditions within the area surrounding the property of rezone have not changed in that area. And that concludes all staff's findings. Thank you, board. Thank you, John. Board members, any questions of the staff's presentation? All right. Hearing none, we will go into public comment portion of the meeting. And for those members of the public who wish to speak on this matter, Please note that the Planning Board bases its decisions on the approval conditions and exceptions described in 2-7.2, which the items that uh, Mr. Fisher just went over. During our deliberations, the Planning Board does not consider general statements of support or opposition. Accordingly, please limit your testimony to those conditions and, and approval exceptions described in 2-7.2. Please also note that only those individual, individuals who have given testimony on the record and completed a speaker request form will be allowed to speak at the subsequent hearing before the BCC. Um, and at this time, we'll go back through the individuals that wish to speak on this. Uh, Mr. Tim Barnes. All right, sir, at this time, we will have you uh, be sworn in and state your name and address for the record.
Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir, and welcome again. Uh, go ahead with your comments. And as we stated, these are two separate issues that will go in front of the commissioners, so you would have an opportunity to speak at both of them. So uh, this, this reserves your right to do so. So go ahead with your comments. You My can name is Tim Barnes. I live at 2155 Cliffbrook Avenue, Pensacola, Florida, 32526. Um, I work for the Hands and Feet of Jesus Ministry. Um, we, we do a lot of work throughout the whole county. Um, we give about bus tickets, food, clothing, and too many things for me to list in this venue. Um, the reason that we're concerned about uh, Brentwood Park is because it's centrally located in the county, and it's a place where people can get to for us to help them. Um, we'll just have to go somewhere else. If a bomb fell on, the can on that park tomorrow and it was gone, we'll find another spot, but it's a great spot for us, and that's why we've been there for years. That's why other people use it almost every day of the week. That's why there's a church service on Sunday. That's why there's other community events there constantly. So I guess as a, as a taxpayer in Escambia County, the thing that I'm baffled about is I don't work for the county, but I know a lot of people that do. And if you drive around the county, there's properties everywhere that aren't being utilized in any way, shape, or form. Why not pick a different place? I understand the logic of, well, we're not going to have to buy this. Okay, I'm a computer technician. I get that. And it's centrally located. Great. But what I'm, what I, what I'm begging you to do is just, just go somewhere else, all right? We need that park. We use that park constantly. I know there's tons of other properties. What I'm saying is don't rezone it. Don't change it. Leave it alone, okay? We use it. Rezone something else and pick a different place. That's what all the people that I work with want you guys to do. Thank you. Mr. Barnes, I had a quick question for you. Um, we've heard testimony that there's a, a church that's kind of adjacent to the park there. Um, yes, is sir. your ministry affiliated with them in any way? Or? No, sir. My, my ministry is strictly voluntary. We're not attached to any uh, church, to any group for the reasons of why we all know how that works. <laughs> we don't want any oversight from them. We want the Bible to be our only a rule book okay so we are, we specifically don't get money from the city the county the state the federal government or any committee at some church that we have to go through okay all right it's, thank you sir i appreciate it thank you michael kimbrell good morning again sir we'll have you sworn in Yes, ma'am, I do. Before you get started, we understand from testimony from others that you do a great deal in the community. I want to thank you for that uh, before you uh, give your testimony. So thank you for your service. Uh, Go well, ahead, thank sir. You. Um, and um, speaking about the homeless community wasn't my goal today. I was to speak about the zoning of the park, um, but it does seem like it has become a very hot button topic for today in this park. Um, so I probably will speak a little bit about it, but <laughs> I'd like to go back on the record that um, stating that once we lose the screen space, we've lost it. We don't get it back like it, it's gone forever. So please let's keep it that let's keep it a recreational park. Um, I know that the county's promising us that they'll give us one little corner with the child's playground equipment, but what you've heard from this community is that it's used for much bigger things than that, and so you will be killing all of that by eliminating this park. Um, but I've got about two minutes left, so I'm going to speak to the, the historical aspects of this park. The reason that we have such a problem with homelessness in this park is the lack of anyone doing anything about homelessness in our community. This is what doing nothing looks like, and eliminating a park because we are doing nothing in this community is a travesty. It truly is. So we have a super fun site that has been deeded back to the county that we for decades have allowed homeless people to live on because we can't develop it and we don't want these people so they can live on that toxic land. And that's the truth of what we have done in this community. And just blocks from that land, that toxic site is this park. 
and people congregate in that park because it is a public commons. It is one place they can go without being trespassed, mm -hmm. without being run off. And the reason they are there is that there is nowhere else for them to go. Everywhere else they go, they get loitering charges, vagrancy charges, trespassed. And so, yes, they congregate in the park. If we don't want them in our park, we must build something for them to go to. We, I will say that you will see less numbers in the park while my center, which is just a block and a half away, is open. I wish I had the staff and funding to stay open longer, and I think you would see less uh, attendance in that park from the homeless community. But this is us doing nothing, and it almost seems like it's been done on purpose to eliminate this park. I'm, I don't think we're that diabolical in this community, but it does kind of look that way to me. Please, let's, let's do the right thing. Let's save this park. Let's address homelessness. And let's not, you know, keep kicking this can and losing our public spaces. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Melissa, Dina, please be sworn in, ma'am. <coughs> I do. Thank you. Melissa Pino, 413 Southeast Bob, let's get, you know, my heart is just breaking because Michael knows that I would be the first one up here pounding the podium um, if I felt like there was a chance that this is not going through because I agree with him entirely. The problem is the county's got every legal right to do this. This is quasi-judicial and we're supposed to be talking to the ramifications of the zoning change, right? I've been through it. I don't, I don't see anything that the county doesn't have the, the legal right to ask for, but in principle, I, I agree with Michael. If I can't stay optimistic about the idea that we can split the baby and try to have something for everyone, then I'm done with advocacy in this county. I don't know when my last vestiges of hope are finally going to be burnt out after five years of banging my head against a wall, but every day I wake up and I say, maybe today. <laughs> I do think that the public input of this aspect of this does touch on not... <sighs> I know that the county staff and, and everyone involved has done stuff legally. Please realize that we're not fooled. We got two separate public input aspects here. The meeting that the neighborhood attended, 200, what was it, 200 yards? Let me put that in, into perspective. That's two Hail Marys. That's two screen passes that don't get picked off and run into the end zone, that he avoids a block and he's all the way into the end zone. That's 10 seconds, 200 yards. I bet you anything if Michael goes home and measures, that, that distance was picked so Washburn did not get noticed on the neighborhood meeting. Different issue from the zoning. And I just checked with Drew and I appreciate him. He's always so helpful. I had misremembered. I thought that the, the BCC expanded the, the radius of the zoning. They only did above Nine Mile Road. So it stayed 500 feet ridiculously below Nine Mile, but it's at like 2,500 feet or something above Nine Mile Road. You, 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 you may not have any legal parameters where you have to or a mechanism where you can do this legally. You can certainly make a recommendation to the BCC. If your board sees fit to do these changes, you can put together language. You can send a recommendation. They'll either take it or they won't. But if there's any spirit at all in the county of preserving some green space, preserving some play space and equipment, having the room for a tax shelter, a, a tax, excuse me, a, a tax building and a community center, don't have to cut down those trees. We all saw the aerial, maybe this time. Maybe this time. And your recommendation, even if it's not taken, will help advocates. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pino. Albert Skidmore. Morning again, sir. Be sworn in, please. Okay, hey, uh, don't y'all have a tax office on W Street? 
I mean, you're going to build one right beside the other. You're going to close that one down. That's my question. And uh, also, just 70 acres, I think 70 acres, a super fun site. Why? What's wrong? I heard that that was okay that y'all was going to commercialize it. I read something in the newspaper two or three months ago. What's wrong with using that? They were right about that. What's wrong with doing somewhere else? There's plenty of space in each Canby County. And uh, I'm totally against taking the park, you know what I'm saying? It's, uh, it is central to uh, Washburn's uh, operation, too. All the people come and go there. I... Anyway, thank you for listening to me. Thank you, sir. Okay. Mr. Todd Barnett. Please be sworn in, sir. So I'm Todd Burnett, and I, I am uh, with the Brentwood Animal Hospital, 5101 North Palafox Street. So I'd like to keep it pretty simple and clean and check some of the boxes off if we can. Number one, the, uh, the original plan at the neighborhood meeting we, uh, that was discussed uh, does include a plan to try and keep the heritage trees. keeps coming up. I think we should make that clear initially in this stage. That does seem to be in the works. Okay. Uh, number two, I'd like to point out it did come up in the meeting uh, with another discussion that there is a lack of green space or things of nature. Chimes Way Park is four blocks to the west immediately, and it is a well-functioning park. It's clean. There's kids there. It's an enjoyable park. People go there, skateboard. So there is a park immediately available four blocks to the west. Okay. Um, and I'd kind of like to conclude with the notion that there's a lot of sympathy and empathy for the homeless situation and those groups that service them, I think that that's very compassionate and nice. But as they have pointed out several times, they come and visit and they leave. They don't have to live with the park every day. They don't have to deal with the impact of the park every day. They don't have to worry about their staffers. So they, I don't have to worry about their clients. They don't have their clients, like my clients, come to me and discuss, what can we do about this? I don't know. I'm just a veterinarian. But anyway, I'd like you to take into account the impact that it has and have some sympathy and empathy for the uh, for the local residents that would be nice thank you for your time thank you sir kevin white kevin wade 413 southeast boblets oh i'm sorry no. sir please be sworn in mm -hmm. i do Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Horace got me on the left hand. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can't wait four and three Sunday problems. Um, yeah, the, the, the county has every legal right to go ahead and do this. Sometimes you do nothing. Um, thankfully, commissioner who wants to sell pocket parks is no longer with us. Um, I busted that one. Uh, there's, there are parks. <laughs> there's plenty of parks. We need more parks all the time. Um, and the heritage trees, well, sometimes you have every legal right to go ahead and cut down that heritage tree, but <coughs> leave the little ones, they might become heritage trees on their own. <clears throat> If the, the county, to me, doesn't seem like it has a legal right to exercise every single legal right all the time, because there's plenty of times the county does nothing. Oh. But I'm just trying to get on the record, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that has not spoken on this matter that wishes to speak on case Z202301? All right, hearing none, we'll close the public comment portion of the hearing. And uh, while I have the floor, I'd, I'd just like to address everyone. I think uh, Ms. Pino said it very eloquently that we have um, criteria that we have to follow with this planning board. and. Some of these things that we're talking about, although they're 
uh, very important to us and, and many of us on this board. Uh, well, first of all, let me say all of us on this board are volunteers, so we're members of the community too. And I'm very concerned about uh, the homeless situation and um, I, not in this community, but when I lived in other communities, I was on Coalition for the Homeless and did a lot of work. So I, I understand the problem very in depth, but uh, many of the people on this board have done outreach ministries and are uh, involved in their church that try to do things. So I don't think that a decision from this board on a legal matter shows, uh, you know, that we have morals and a heart for this. I think that there are criteria that we are bound to. And we could, if the board decided, send forward a proposal to the county commissioners to deny it. And it will get overturned. I can tell you right now it will get overturned if we do that um, because we don't have the basis to deny it because they have met all of the criteria. So I, I hear your pleas, but as far as what this board legally has to do, we have to look at the criteria and we have to make our vote based on that. And we've heard testimony on the record from a very high level official in the county that this is important to them to preserve this area and to work with the park and not eliminate the trees and the park and everything and we have to take that at face value now here's the key and you all know this i'm not telling you anything that you don't know the county commissioners have the real authority in this matter not this board this board has to look at A, B, C, D, E, and we have to vote on those items, and so we're very limited. County commissioners have a lot of leeway what they can do. So I hear you, um, uh, you know, very compassionate towards these concerns, and I think, you know, I'd be happy to personally call my commissioners and recommend that they follow through with this plan that we've been told. But as far as an official position, I'm going to have to support the rezoning request. So I just wanted to get that on the record. I appreciate all that all of you do in the community. Um, I've been trying to help this community, serving on this board for nearly 20 years. And I do that because I feel like I try to make an impact on the community as well. I do it in a different way than some of you do, but I, I try to do that. So going to open it up to any board members that would like to discuss it or, or give a statement, and then I'll ask for a, for a vote on it. So, Walker? I'll, I'll chime in as well. I think, um, Melissa, I think you hit it on the head. They've, they've met the requirements on the county level, um, and I'm sure they, they probably knew they would when they submitted the request. So, um, and... Mr. Chairman, I think you're correct. Uh, there's, we've gotten, you know, word on the record that there is plans to keep a portion of this this parcel um, open to the public with a park and some facilities there. Um, and I think as we move forward, I, I know that uh, the homelessness issue has, has been brought up a lot when regarding this park. I think probably um, as I move forward, I think just maybe using. Um, the argument that this park is being utilized and it's being utilized by the public um, and and by everybody. And I think that that, that might go a longer way. I, I think sometimes when we um, bring up the homelessness issue, there's there's folks on either side that, that bring in a lot of emotion with that. Um, and so I would hate to see something go by the wayside because folks' emotions get too involved and we lose out on a portion of this being open uh, for the public, for whoever that might be um because i think it's highly important so i don't know if anybody else has anything to say but um willing to make a motion if if not all right thank you uh walker um board members anyone else wish to make a statement or a comment before mr walker makes a motion all right sir proceed with your motion all right so my motion will be that we approve case z 2023-01 with the recommendation from the planning board that a portion of this parcel be left open and to the community for some sort of recreational activity. Second. Second. Any further discussion on the motion and second? 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously to make that recommendation, and uh, thank you for including in there that uh, the, the board does support um, the efforts that are going on to, to keep that open. So, Okay, at this time, is there any other additional uh, business for the quasi-judicial hearing? All right, hearing none, we will go into adjournment on that meeting, and we will immediately go back over to our regular planning board meeting. And at this time, we've already called that meeting to order and gone through our uh, reading of the legal, uh, publication of the legal. And we will go into our first case, which is OSP 202301. It's being presented today by the applicant, Meredith Bush, who is the agent for Divine Farms, LLC, the owner. This is 174.68 plus minus acres from Conservation Neighborhood and Wetlands and Regional Employment, which is the Muskogee branch to mixed use s uh, mixed use suburban and um, at this time i will ask uh, well we are out of quasi judicial so we don't have to talk about um, anyone having uh, outside contact but uh, who will be presenting on behalf of the staff okay allison if you'd introduce yourself please good morning um, allison lindsay uh, development services urban planner okay thank you go ahead with the First okay. part of the presentation, please. So these are the maps and photographies for the case of OSP 202301. So this is the location map showing the location. This is the zoning map um, showing the uh, two parcels outlined. This is the future land use map. And this is the uh, proposed request to change the future land use to mixed use suburban. This is um, <coughs> this is just showing the Muskogee DSAP area. Couldn't see it. And this is the prime soils and the wetlands map for the parcel. This is the flood zone map of the um, showing the flood <coughs> zone on the parcel. <coughs> And this is the uh, development program, the acreage map, showing the different um, acreages in the different um, Muskogee areas. This is just another aerial map. And that's uh, this is the sign posted on um, Kingsville. And this is looking um, onto the subject property. And this is another uh, parcel, a uh, picture looking onto the subject parcel. This is looking south on Kingsville Road, um, properties on the right. This is just another view of the subject property. Looking northeast across Kingsville Road from the subject property. Looking east across Kingsfield from the subject property. This is looking south along Kingsville. It's looking north on Kingsville Road uh, toward the subject property. Looking at the property across Kingsville. And this is the public hearing sign that was posted um, on the southern portion of the property. Looking east on Kingsfield from the uh, property. Looking at the property from across Kingsfield. And then just another picture of the property across Kingsfield. Looking west along Kingsville Road from the south, from the southern portion of the property. Looking west along Kingsfield from the southern portion of the parcel. And that's the maps and photography. Okay, thank you, Allison. Um, but before we get yeah. started, I would like to, since the findings are up here, I would like to do some house cleaning. Okay. <laughs> For the um, on the general data, it says the acreage is one thirty three point sixty eight. If you look down in the site description, I've got 174.68. The survey, um, it had changed, and we didn't catch the, the changes in here. The, those, the subject was already posted um, on the site and um, emailed for the, advertised for the 174. So we will have to send out a new advertisement before the BCC to state the correct acreage of the 133.68. Okay. 
Okay. And we'll update the ordinance as well. Okay. And um, I'll ask our board attorney, Ms. Huell, um, with that correction, do we need to accept uh, the new staff analysis uh, with a motion? In yes. Okay. All right. So um, with the correction that Allison is addressing, Chair will entertain a motion to accept that updated staff analysis for the hearing. So moved. Motion, second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, let the record reflect that's an updated staff analysis for it. Okay, Ms. Bush, good morning. Good morning, board. Uh, Meredith Bush of Clark Partington. I'm an attorney and a land use planner. I'm here um, along with the developer. We have uh, Bill Greenhut of Greenhut Construction present, as well as Rodney Sutton, Neil Nash, and Blake McKinney. If there are questions, I don't believe they filled out speaker forms, but just so you're aware, we do have the developer here for questions. And um, I'll just briefly run through the opt-out request. We are asking to opt out 133.68 acres from the sector plan, and we're requesting mixed-use suburban. And just running through the criteria, um, it's important for you to be aware that there's already a development agreement in place for this property, which limits the uh, development to 221 lots. There'll be two phases. The first phase would be 60 lots. The second phase would be 161 lots. Um, and then addressing the criteria, this is not located in a wellhead protection area. Um, we provided documentation from the Division of Historical Resources, which detected that there are no historical resources on the property. As noted in staff's maps, there is a portion of wetlands on the property, and we provided staff with a wetland delineation. Um, it's in flood zone X and A. As far as traffic concerns go, Kingsfield is a local collector roadway. We provided a peak generation report by Rebel Battle. And you'll see in staff's analysis that they have determined that these values are well below any <coughs> degradation of the level of service for Kingfield, Kingsfield. So there will not be a negative impact on traffic from the creation of the 221 lots. Um, sanitary sewer and potable water. We provided documentation from Farm Hill Utilities. Water is available and they have capacity. Um, it also notes that the developer will be responsible for the cost of expanding to connect to that water main, which the developer, again, is present if you have questions of that, but they're more than willing to, to bear that burden. Um, sanitary sewer would be by ECUA. Uh, similarly, ECUA has capacity. Um, the wetland and drainage stormwater system would be designed to county standards for a 100-year flood event. Solid waste, there's capacity at the Escambia County landfill, and ECUA would provide service. You'll also see in the backup uh, documentation from the Escambia County School District which shows that they have uh, capacity and have submitted a reservation of the documented capacity for this development. Um, I would note page 22 of our submittal also has an incorrect acreage so we'd ask that that be changed to 133.68 acres which represents 1.55 percent of the 8,611 0.80 acres developable in this portion of the sector plan. Another part of the criteria, the aggregate opt-outs, um, up to this point you've removed 309.10 acres from the sector plan. The underlying zoning is MDR and we've requested mixed-use suburban which is compatible with MDR um, and so that flu is consistent with that zoning. The previous flu on this property was mixed-use suburban, so we're asking to go back to that. The prior zoning was R2, which allowed for seven dwelling units per acre. The implementation of the sector plan effectively downzoned the property. The Conservation Neighborhood limited it to three dwelling units per acre, so opting the property out would restore those lost development rights. Um, I'll leave it at that. I mean, that touches on all the high points of the criteria, but I'm open to take any questions. We would just ask that you grant the opt-out from the sector plan. Okay. And um, you mentioned the total acreage that has been opted out. How many cases does that uh, represent? I think it's... This is the 10th. The 10th one. Okay. Okay. Um, and not that this has an impact on this particular case, but when we're done, we'd like to... 
I know Horace is out of the room. We'd like to hear an update on what's going on with the sector plan and all of that. So, but it doesn't have an impact on this case. But, um, okay, board members, any questions uh, of the applicant? Okay. Allison, did you have, you want to go through your staff analysis and give details on it? Can I say ditto? No, I'll go through <laughs> that funny. Okay, so this is the analysis, the OSP 202301 Kingsville Road, <clears throat> 133.68 plus or minus acres. The request is to opt out of the sector plan and assigning a future land use category. Um, current zoning is medium density residential and their future land use request is from the conservation neighborhood wetlands regional employment to the mixed use suburban. So uh, the subject property is part of a the Wildwood Estates Development Agreement Divine Farms LLC developer, uh, Scammy County um, and the Scammy County that allows a, the total development of 1,200 residential units for their entire land totaling 777.43 plus or minus acres. The subject parcel is within the DSAP is 133.68 plus or minus acres, including the wetlands. The applicant stated that there is no immediate proposed development, although we just heard of the, <coughs> the um, phase one and two for Kingsfield one and two, which were total uh, 220 residential units. Um, and we also recognize that the master plan, it doesn't vest the development for the 220. Is it only once a final plat comes in, is reviewed and approved, then those numbers are um, locked in. So based on a site visit as well as the public records in Muscambia County property appraiser, the parcel is currently vacant and used as timberland. The underlying zoning for the parcel is MDR, which allows 10 dwelling units per acre. So for the availability of facilities and services, sanitary sewer, Emerald Coast Utilities Authority supplies wastewater to the region and the developer has communicated with ECUA stating the developer is bringing the sewer to the area. So once the project is officially proposed and the application submitted to the county, um, they must identify the provider for sanitary sewer. So solid waste, <clears throat> the solid waste will be collected by ECUA for disposal into the Scammy County landfill. The amend this amendment for opting out will not affect the population projection. However, when a project is submitted, it will be reviewed and must go through the subdivision review process. For potable water, the level of service <clears throat> for potable water within Escambia County is 250 gallons per residential connection per day, and the non-residential uses are based on the equivalent residential connection to be calculated by the service provider. Potable water for the area is supplied by Farm Hill Utilities, who operates off of three wells and three elevated storage tanks. The comprehensive plan and the Florida statute states that potable water facilities shall be in place to serve a new development but it does not require them to be in place when changing the land use designation. However, they must be in place prior to a certificate of occupancy or equivalent approvals. The county did receive a letter from Farm Hill Utilities stating that there is capacity to provide water to the development and any cost associated with the connection to the existing water main will be the developer's responsibility. So for stormwater management, um, this amendment itself, it doesn't, require stormwater requirements just for the land use change or calculations. However, the stormwater is a definite important part of the aspect of the review and permitting to ensure that uh, the runoff is kept um, on the land and the attenuation through any stormwater ponds or uh, infiltration systems. So um, for traffic, streets, and access, the parcel fronts Kingsville, which is a local road, the review of the area showed that various transportation improvements are planned near the DSAP, such as the Kingsville Extension and the Beulah Road Exchange, and currently they are in the process of the road improvements in the area of Kingsville Road. The applicant submitted a traffic study generated by Rebull Battle and Associates for a 220 lot, two phase subdivision on the parcel. Any development application will require submittal review and approval through the site plan process, meeting all the requirements of the LDC and the comprehensive plan. For recreation and open space, <coughs> the mixed use suburban land use category allows for residential, retail sales and service, and recreation as permitted uses. 
The county does not have a level of service standards for recreation. However, any development could create usable and accessible open space, which would contrib contribute to the overall connectivity of a development. This amendment would not rely on open space requirements. However, the future development must, must go through the review process and meet all the standards. For public schools facilities, based on the public school facilities <coughs> records in Escambia County, the assigned schools are Jim Allen, Ransom, and Tate. The school district staff is part of the site plan review process and they do have an ability to comment on all the proposed projects uh, in Escambia County. For single family residential, medium density zoning allows 10 dwelling units per acre, which would allow a maximum of 1,746 dwelling units. Information provided from the school district for student population is as follows. For single family, elementary would be 331.93 students, middle 165.97, high school 165.97, totaling 663.86 students. For the multifamily residential, which is 10 dwelling units per acre, student population is as follows. Elementary is 183.44, middle is 91.72, High school, 91.72, totaling 366.87 students. The mixed-use suburban future land use, which is 25 dwelling units an acre, would allow 4,367 dwelling units with student populations for single-family as follows. Elementary, 829.73. Middle, 414.87. High school, 414.87, totaling 1,659 students. For the multifamily, residential, elementary is 458.54, middle is 229.27, and high school 229.27, totaling 917.8 students. The Wildwood Estates Master Plan approved this year showed that the subject parcel as King fills phase one and two for a total of 220 single family homes. If the development is submitted and approved as shown, the student population would be as follows. Elementary would be 41.8, middle 20.9, high school 20.9, totaling 83.6 students. And if the need arises, then there will need to be adjustments made to the school zone boundaries to, make, to, to balance the capacity among the schools. Impact to natural resources. Based on the uh, GIS information system, the subject parcel is not located in a wellhead area. Historical significant sites. The applicant provided documentation stating there is no previous recorded historical resources within the parcel. The Escambia County Comprehensive Plan has a section for historical preservation and at any time during a development, if any artifacts are discovered, they are to cease the construction. <clears throat> natural environment. There are hydric soils on site which suggest the presence of wetlands. The parcel has an area of wetlands on the northern parcel of the subject property. Wetlands and surface water may be subject to jurisdictional regulations by the Army Corps of Engineers under Section 4.04 of the Clean Water Act. When a project is submitted to the county, an environmental study will be necessary. So comprehensive plan requirements for changes to the existing DSAP. Um, so components of the sector plan include aspects such as community design, environmental analysis, transportation guidance, and economic development principles. The final land use plan, which is an attachment A, identifies the overall boundaries of the sector plan, the distribution, the extent and location of land use and land uses. The land use plan and development program provided specific growth data with development program calculations and assigning permissible densities and intensities for various, for various uses. Section 2.02 .02 development program of the sector plan illustrates the development calculations by individual DSAP allowances. The total developable land under the Muskogee Branch DSAP is approximately 3,380.10 acres. The subject parcel is in the Muskogee Branch with access via Kingsville Road in the conservation, neighborhood, wetland, and regional employment. 
If approved, the requested removal of the parcel from the sector plan will not create a fragmented DSAP. The parcel size in relation to the individual DSAP land use category and in relation to the overall sector plan and the aggregate acreage of any opt-out. <clears throat> the applicant's parcel, approximately 133.68 plus or minus acres, is located within the DSAP, Muskogee um, Branch DSAP. It is specifically identified in the land use map under sections M25, M26, and M27. Based on the calculations utilizing the data from section 2.02 .02 of the DSAP document, the total developable acres in the entire DSAP is 8,611.80 acres. The applicant's parcel represents 1.55% of the existing developable acreage. <coughs> Under the developable program calculations, the total residential development acres in the Muskogee branch DSAP under the conservation land use is 1,289.9 developable acres. Removal of the applicant's 63.1 plus or minus acres will be a decrease in <clears throat> of 4.89% of the avail available developable acres. Under the regional employment land use is 1,455.0 developable acres. Removal of the 3.5 plus or minus acres in the regional employment from the 44.8 plus or minus acres would result in a decrease of 0.2% of the available developable acres. The specific Muskogee Branch DSAP land use for parcels in sections M25, 26, and 27 are identified as conservation neighborhood and wetlands with a total developable acres of 260.9 collectively. The M28 is identified as the regional employment with a total developable acres of 44.8 acres. <clears throat> In the next section on page 9 and 10, um, you can see the calculations for M25 to 27, and if the board would like, I can go through each one of those. If you would rather me go through them than reading them. It's up to you. I, don't, I don't think that's necessary. Okay. I mean, the board was provided the package ahead of time. So. Okay. So this is the 10th. Um, opt-out request uh, that the county has processed. So the total aggregate acres um, would be 442.78. Um, assuming a maximal theoretical build-out under the mixtures of uses, <clears throat> the DSAP area would produce approximately 27,145 jobs when analyzed, when analyzed using the maximum residential build-out of 23,000 dwelling units, the, the results is a jobs to housing, I mean, I'm sorry, a jobs to employed residents ratio of 1.18. A balance of job to housing ratio is roughly 0 0.8 to 1.2. If the proposed amendment is approved, the resulting job to housing ratio would be 1.25. So number five, the existing transportation infrastructure and, and any affected um, the proposal may have on the capacity. Um, this is from the transportation and traffic and they are not here, so I'm just gonna read what they had um, provided. So the TTO, Transportation Traffic Office uh, staff has reviewed the sector plan on Kingsfield Road um, and let's see. So the property in question has frontage on West Kingsfield Road. West Kingsfield is a two-lane undivided facility without paved shoulders. The approximate pavement width for this segment of road is 18 feet with variable right away up to 50 feet. The posted speed is 35 miles per hour. The county has an active project in design West Kingsfield Road Extension Project. That will, <clears throat> that will reconstruct the existing roadway from Highway 97 West to the first 90 degree curve, as well as construct a new two lane roadway further west to connect to the eventual Beulah Interchange connector project in multiple phases. The phase one project is 100% designed and permitted and is currently in the right of way acquisition phase. The construction phase will follow the right-of-way phase once the necessary funding has been identified. The new roadway extension will run east to west 
north of the subject property for this report and is expected to remove expected to remove pass through traffic 97 to Beulah from the section of West Kingsfield that is impacted by this development once completed. Escambia County considers the function of West Kingsfield Road as a local collector roadway. FDOT performs a traffic analysis of Kingsville Road immediately east of County Road 97, which yielded an average daily trip count of 3,100. 3,100. The county performed traffic counts on the segment of West Kingsville Road that will be most affected by this development in December of 2022. The daily volume was recorded at 907 BPD near Toby Dean Road and 1,340 vehicles per day just west of Highway 97. Peak hour volumes recorded in December 2022 with additional anticipated peak hour volumes per the submitted peak generation report show values well below any degradation of the expected level of service for this section of the roadway. <clears throat> so number six, the underlying zoning district and the compatibility with surrounding DSAP land use. The existing parcel is currently zoned medium density residential. Surrounding parcels are LDR, MDR, and, agri and ag. If removed from the sector plan, the following range of permitted uses will be allowed in the existing zoning. So it's medium density residential, which basically is single family. Now this was old R2, so you can't, um, it says two family dwellings only on lands zone R3 or V4. So this was prior to, uh, this was R2. So it'd be single family dwellings, no retail sales, no retail service. Seven, the consistency of any requested future land use designation with the underlying zoning. The requested mixed-use suburban future land use category would be consistent with the underlying zoning, zoning uses, densities, and intensities of the medium density residential. Prior to the uh, adoption of the DSAP, the 2020 future land use designation for this partial was R2, was residential, and with the adoption of the 2030, it was mixed-use suburban. Prior to the adoption of Midwest Sector Plan, the parcel was zoned R2, which allowed seven dwelling units per acre. And then <clears throat> with the new 2015, MDR allowed for 10 dwelling units per acre. And then you had the conservation neighborhood that came and gave it three dwelling units per acre. So they were in fact decreased by the adoption of the sector plan from their uh, the dwelling units. So if, a, if approved, the sector plan boundary map would be adjusted accordingly to reflect the removal of these parcels um, from the plan, which is shown in a, an attachment B. And that's the end of the staff's analysis. Okay, thank you, Allison. Uh, just one minor, I think, needs to be correction. If you'll go back to number one, second paragraph from the end. One. What page is that on? Uh, where it says Wildwood Estates Master Plan approved this year, I believe it was March of 2022. It, when I wrote it, it was 2022. Right, I guess. right. Yes, and that's why I said it's just a okay. minor change, but I just wanted to reflect that it wasn't approved in 2023. It was, in fact, improved okay. in 2022. Thank you very much. I think it was March is what it was. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Meredith, anything else that you'd like to add to... Oh, okay. All right. Um, board members, any questions of the staff analysis? Um, Allison, you mentioned the density uh, uh, as it as it progressed. Uh, it was R two prior to the sector plan it was seven per acre. Then it went to uh, ten per acre, and then with the sector plan, it was three per yes. acre. What would it? What would the density be if going forward? If it was MDR, it would be the 10 dwelling units per acre. Okay. Thank you, sir. Other questions? Okay.
point out that that density is subject to those limitations in the development agreement. So it's 221 lots total, even though the overall acreage would allow a much greater number of units, the um, development agreement that is in place limits us to 221. Okay, and just, Meredith, if you would just elaborate a, a little bit on that, since we have a new, new board member, that master plan development agreement, can you just give a brief overview of what that was? Um, it may be better for one of the members of the development team to give you the history, but basically there is a development agreement in place that um, has multiple phases. It allows for an aggregate um, development in the area, uh, lands under their control of, I believe, 1,200 total units, 1,200 units, um, but the area impacted in the sector plan would only be the 221 units. And when you say it's in place, it was... Um was enacted with the county. The county signed that master agreement with the developer, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and the actual development agreement, as well as several amendments to it, are in the information submitted by the applicant. I believe it was initially, it's been over a number of years. Um, let's see. I think you mentioned so 2007. 2007, I believe, mm -hmm. is when it was first put in place um, between Escambia County and Divine Farms LLC. There was an amendment in 2016, a second amendment in 2021. Okay, so that agreement went in place in originally 2007. Um, Correct. Allison, what's the testimony of when the sector plan was enacted and accepted? Do we know the date of that? 2011, the sector plan okay. was. So that was done after that agreement was already in place with the county. Okay. Correct. Okay. Board members, any additional questions? Chair will entertain a motion. Oh. I didn't have any. You didn't she had a speaker for request okay. form that had multiple, all three, all three on there. Okay. We didn't. I'm sorry, <laughs> Marissa. I missed that. I <laughs> thought you were just speaking, and and you wanted to speak as well. Okay. Uh, we'll open up for uh, public comment. Uh, Melissa, you first. Thank you, Chairman Brisky, Melissa Pino, four one three Southeast Boblets. Um, what's it been? About four years now since I had finally gotten deep enough into the sector plan to identify it as the boondoggle that it is. Came before your board and said that if you handed an eight-year-old a fistful of crayons and just told them to randomly draw on the map, they could have done just as well with the sector plan. And Chairman Brisky, I'd be happy to bring you up to speed on some aspects of what's been going on with the latest DOA hearing since I spent the latter part of two weeks fighting disinformation um, out of ECW and the PNJ's editorial board. That's not to say Jim Little because he did an excellent job of reporting on this. It's just when the overlord of the editorial board and the overlords of the uh, PNJ swooped in, they of course got the number of the opt-outs wrong in favor for Jacqueline and despite my best protestations would not change the text. At the last hearing, she sat there all day and never mentioned to the judge that she had to leave at a particular time when the judge said that he'd be there till midnight to hear everything. She perjured her way, and I do say perjured, and I do mean perjured, through the hearing uh, so that she could then do a surprise, I have to be out of here at a certain time so she could run down to Civicon and jump on stage and grab up a trophy for government transparency. In the meantime, I was emailing everybody but you all, there are about 50 people on the email with updates about all the disinformation happening. This was a DOA hearing, so by this time it didn't have anything to do with the planning board. Let me read you some of our current specimens, and the reason that this pertains is not just because you brought it up, Chairman Brisky, but this kind of garbage, the surround, people are human, it does bleed in, and I want to box out any idea that any of this has any bearing on your decision, because if, she's, if she keeps going the way she's going, she's going to get kicked out of DOA for being a vexatious litigant which is why she was so happy to put those two cases in abeyance, right? We thought it's because she finally learned her lesson that if she lost the Westmarks opt-out, she was done. Ah, 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 ah. She knew she was coming up on those seven, the magical seven number with DOA. So she dropped those two cases so she could preserve the two opt-outs in her backyard. You need to understand what 
the pressure that this 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 person is doing and what they're doing to staff morale. She's even called the judges corrupt. She gets one in on Miss Bush. Here's a couple of examples of her recent posts. The unplanning board will opt out and upzone another huge parcel on the dogleg park of West Kingsfield Road and probably the traffic staff will lie again under oath and say there are no problems with the road. I totally understand what you're saying and we argued that for the nearby property but unfortunately the county staff told a lot of fibs in the hearing under oath. Here's where she gets going on libeling Ms. Bush and understand if what she was saying is true, which it's not, this would actually be actionable by the Florida Bar. You know what, I'll just, um, this isn't anything that I think you all can put in the record, but I did, if there's gonna, it, it, will there be a public forum? Yes. Oh, I'll just continue this at public forum, thank you. Thanks, Ms. Pino. Mr. Wade. Thank you, sir. Kevin Wade, 413 Southeast Boblets. Oh, it may sound like I'm down on staff for the county sometimes then. I am not. The this, this staff and legal and, and everybody here oh, love what they do. They're showing their love all the time. Uh, I saw the love for Kingsfield Road and staff's photos. I could smell the fresh blacktop from those photos. I, I like seeing some love going into Kingsfield Road. It sounds like this is something that will be some love that goes into Kingsfield Road. Oh, and so far as uh, the serial opt-out elephant that's not here, um, there were, this is a quick list of opt-out challenges that have happened so far, and I certainly hope this doesn't get challenged. Um, one, Wilson Robertson's. Two, Frank Elizabeth Westmark. Three, Clyde Jolly. Four, Miriam Arnold. Five, College Hill Baptist Church. Six, Todd Stafford Pinetop. Seven was the Owen family. The other opt-out was the Zelinkas family. It came right after the College Hill Baptist and Todd Stafford opt-outs. There were two of the ones involved in the stipulated withdrawal. She didn't challenge Zelinkis, so out of the nine so far, she missed one. Oh, I've got the transcript of the, a small transcript of the county DOA hearing recently, plenty of uh, material there of perjury. Um, I can read that at public <laughs> forum, oh, but I support this and the sector plan Again, <laughs> again, there's a lot of folks who still don't know about the sector plan that live in it that may do nothing. Honestly, again, that, that comes back up. They may do nothing. There's many, so, so many people that had no clue what was happening. And uh, the 50% taking, I, <laughs> I, that's just criminal, uh, absolutely criminal. Y yeah, we would hope that many people would do nothing with their land, but everybody has dreams. And everybody that purchased land anywhere in Escambia County has had a dream. And I thank you all for what you're doing and your humor and compassion and your service. Thank you, sir, we appreciate it. Anyone else that wishes to speak on this matter? All right, Meredith. If I could just briefly point out, um, we did the calculations and under the development agreement, we're limited to basically 1.7 units per acre. So even though, again, the number, you know, if projected out could be much higher, it's, it's a lot lower. And um, multifamily, although allowed in MUS, would not be allowed in MBR and would not be appropriate for this property. So. Okay, thank you. Board members, any additional questions? Chair will entertain a motion. I will uh, put forward a motion to approve. Okay. I will second. 
Motion to approve and a second as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. Good luck with it. Thank you. Okay. Let's just go back real quickly. Staff members, do we have anything that you want to bring to our attention for the follow-up report or six-month outlook that we need to discuss or know about that's coming? No? Okay. Um, we will go into, uh, do we have any action discussion info items? Nothing? Okay. Um, do any of you want to give an update to the board on the sector plan as far as what the county is doing? And then we'll hear from the members of the public and public forum. Drew? <laughs> you get to be the guinea pig, right? <laughs> That's okay. He was looking around. Uh, <laughs> I was. Where is Horace at? <laughs> yeah. uh, good morning, Andrew Homer, uh, Scambia County Development Services. Sector plan. The latest news I have for you is uh, we did have the recent DOA hearing from last month. Um, I believe the judge has requested the written suggestions from both side, both sides next week, I think it is. Um, so hopefully we won't have as long a wait on this hearing. Um, other than that, the BCC has said, essentially, if someone wants to opt out, let them apply and we'll go from there. So. Okay. Um, and changing uh, post some of the legal issues that are going on but changing removing that uh, from the code would have to go through the Department of Economic Opportunity correct no right. matter the size um, something anything involving the sector plan area will need to go through Tallahassee right so and um, I know that there's been some discussions with them already about Escambia County's sector plan and Correct. moving forward with it. So, so in discussions with Tallahassee, um, the the main theme through that is that it is the county's plan, um, and the county will be the one to let Tallahassee know what we're doing as we do it. Make the recommendation, and then yes, they'll sir. make a decision based on all the facts. Mm -hmm. Okay, just wanted to get all that on the record sure. so everybody has an update as to where we're at with it. So, and you're summarizing the score, this was the 11th, yeah. this is the 10th, and it, has anyone been denied? No. 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 So we're no. batting a thousand. No. Yes. And we may have a couple more to come. Sure. At uh, sure. what point does it dissolve itself? Go for it. I was going to say when it gets to the, I guess the magic number. Um, when DEO states that too many have opted out or Correct. So the th jobs this, to housing is off. Well, <coughs> have you passed a numeric threshold with any of the standards yet? So when we first went over and met with Tallahassee about this, um, when the idea first came up, because we were the first to ever have anyone yeah. want to do this, um, it, was, it was a matter of, we said, well, What's the magic number? What's the magic acreage? And oh, it was more of a is. we'll know it when we see it. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't know what they're going to consider at this point the threshold for the whole thing. Um, we do know that if the whole thing was not viable, everyone would revert to their 2030 future land use, which uh, was deemed by Tallahassee to be the appropriate future land use based on the CCAS study that let us adopt the 2030 comp plan. Okay, just a little bit of a follow-up on that question. In the standards, there's the technical percentages that we're supposed to be within these ranges in sure. certain categories and everything. Does that, would being outside of those ranges negatively impact somebody's ability to opt out if we get outside is that what you're talking about that it would trigger DEO at that point and that was the reason it, for my question right. it theoretically could um, in our discussions with DEO um, 
it was my impression they're more concerned about total overall acreage developable my city acreage um more than those particulars they okay. did stress it's the county's plan the county is going to do what the county is going to do right okay having sat through 10 of these and as a planning board can't we make a recommendation to the to the board of county commissioners to to, to dissolve the sector plan i mean i think we have we have so we did <laughs> yes, and, and we did discuss with DEO um, basically options going forward on that. Um, the BCC at this point has essentially said just if someone wants to opt out, go ahead and process that opt out and we'll see where we go. And again, we could save a lot of time and money for for property owners if if again we make so, another recommendation, it's you know 10, we, 10 opt outs down the road. Uh, apparently, you know, it's going to be a death by a thousand opt-outs, so let's just kind of <laughs> beat them to is, it. Um, yeah. But at the same point, you've got to weigh the consideration that there are some folks who want to develop Absolutely. to the densities granted them through that plan. Um, and if it were gone, they would be then reduced to the 2030. And in some cases, that would be a dramatic uh, wouldn't, wouldn't the savings clause or something come into effect in that case? Or No, sir. That was specific to our new zoning districts. Okay. So that wouldn't have any impact on that? Drew, is there yes, any sir. chance that we approve an opt-out and it gets denied by the DO or, or anybody that is above the planning board that says, no, we're, we're at capacity and we can't opt-out anymore? Sure. You're always making... You're, you make recommendations. The BCC is the one who makes that. No, I mean, if BCC says yeah. they approve it, is there anybody above them that would tell them that, no, because of the rules or whatever, we can't opt out anymore? We're past our sure. limits. Any, anything we submit to Tallahassee um, is subject to the ORC report, objections, recommendations, comments. Um, theoretically, yes, that could be. Uh, it just hasn't happened yet. Because we haven't started hitting those thresholds yet. Correct. Right. <laughs> I go back to... Clear as mud sometimes. Right. Well, that part. I go back to what sold me on killing it, and that is the how unique ours is. Everyone else in the state, five or six landowners or 99% of Absolutely. their DSAP. We have hundreds upon hundreds of landowners, many of them completely ignorant of and what is going parcels on parcels as well very small parcels mm -hmm. it's the complexity does not match <coughs> the mission of a dsap it's a hundred percent a unique creature um, <laughs> it, you know it, <laughs> when when a minimum acreage is needed to hit a plan sometimes you run into a situation like this yeah Okay. Our director's here. So. Thank you. <laughs> I am in support. Thank you, support. Drew. Great job. <laughs> I am in support of everything Mr. Andrew Homer said. I agree completely with him. Uh, uh, the board, they are aware. They are definitely aware of the issues of the sector plan. They are aware. So this is a direction that they gave and told us to do. Uh, recently, they are aware. Believe me, they are aware. So we just keep on priding along because they are definitely aware. And, and, and let me say this to the board members and, and many of the staff who were here during that process. I was here as well. When I think back to it, it was intended to be a planning tool similar to a master plan I think so that that the growth could be focused so we didn't have sprawl and we didn't have problems and I just don't think that at the time that anybody really understood how we were boxing ourselves in and the the unintended consequences that were coming from it so I think when it was originally done it was done in good faith I think it was an attempt to fix some of the problems so to speak that we've had in Beulah and some other places where you know, growth has kind of uh, 
the tails kind of wagged the dog in some cases, but it was intended to do that. But obviously we got a lot of unintended consequences out of it. So, uh, but I fully support unwinding it and doing, and I've said that from the beginning that it's just not feasible. So, okay, we'll go into public forum because I know you all are anxious to give us some more information. So go ahead, Ms. Pino. Thank you, Chairman Brisky. Oh, only in Escambia County. Oh, forgive my slap happiness, but um, I'm so sorry you guys are still dealing with the sector plan, and I even voiced to you. You didn't respond, so I'm not saying that you confirmed it, Mr. Ingwell, but when we were down at a BCC meeting, I said I would imagine the reason that you're voting against these opt-outs is it's a little bit of justifiable protest over the fact that you guys have to keep dealing with this. What is so sad about it is those of us who really want useful preservation that's workable with development have been completely boxed out because all of this nonsense of over and over failing suits and the vain glorious coverage in the PNJ has sucked up all the bandwidth. And the developers who want to clear cut and do what they want to do, they're laughing up their sleeves because this red herring of these serial losing suits is providing all the distractionary in the world for this stuff to run on. And there has never been one <laughs> single environmental improvement on the ground, not even on the agricultural case, which she did win, but because unfortunately, any data got left out, so in the end it just got redone and she pretends she got some big environmental win. There's nothing different on the ground. In the meantime, she is harassing county staff. She is libeling and defaming everyone from staff to the attorneys involved, to the planning board, to the BCC, to the DEO. I, it's absolutely ridiculous, and so I, yeah, oh, and by the way, yes, we know, of course, Mr. Hemmer wants to develop to his full potential. You can't blame him, but I mean, the funny thing is, getting back to the history of this thing, everyone thought that this was going to be a good plan, right? It's just once it got shopped out to the consultants over in Orlando, it didn't really come back the way people were planning, right? And people did not take a good enough look. Right now, Jacqueline's got a special expert who is very dear to me who clearly won't read the darn thing because she gets up at hearings and says this is the Cadillac sector plan and drags out two hours of discussion on how beautifully constructed it is when it doesn't even make any sense on the ground. The, the uh, things aren't even properly identified. As far as that Kingsfield Road goes, she's been defaming the Westmarks. I mean, their grace and fortitude on taking the high road, on not suing her into oblivion when they could have done that per the DOA thing. I mean, those people are angels. I personally wish they would have put a stop to her, but I understand. I can, from the outside looking in, I can see why, why they chose to make the decision they did. For years, she libeled them as developers. They sold to a single family with two children, one of them not even school age. So I'm pretty sure that's not going to impact a lot about the schools and the roads up there. Yeah, the road needs to be fixed. You know, we get that, but hopefully 2023 is the year you guys don't have to be dealing with this anymore. Thank you, Ms. Pino. Mr. Wade. Thank you. Kevin Wade, 4 and 3 Southeast Boblets. I, I love the Redneck Riviera. There are people in this room I've known for 30 years who could attest to the fact that I love the Redneck Riviera. Um, and if you understand the, my, my reference is to the book as well. And that is what brought Duwani to go ahead and build Seaside. And we had 2011, which was uh, introductions of the sector plans. Oh. I don't want to come to meetings. I love you all. I love the staff, but I don't want to come to meetings. You don't want me coming here. <laughs> Even with your grace and humor, you don't want to have to listen to me. And that's fine. Um, but I don't want to watch the hearings <laughs> and scream as I watch someone befuddle staff and so on and even the, the legal teams with their absolute lies 
and smoke screens um, and and just, me just screaming, she just lied, she did it again, she did it again. Why isn't anybody saying anything? And your headspace in all of that is so intense. I, you know, uh, being able to, yes, can I circulate this instead of read it? And present it to the staff. <laughs> because and there is some good stuff here, you may get it, staff will. And I hope that legal comes to me and Mel in prep if there's ever another DOA hearing in this because there are some stats and figures that we have on trading cards of the who's who in those complaining about sector plan opouts. And you know, the short list that I read earlier, oh, <sighs> seeing that lied about in a judicial setting is super upsetting. And I love this place. I love what you're doing. I love the dreams for Scambia County that I have heard from talking to some of you as well. So thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, we don't have anyone else in the room, so I don't think there's anyone else for public forum. But thank you for your input and support. Uh, we appreciate that. Um, Ms. Yule, anything from county attorney's report? Okay. So our next scheduled meeting will be February 7th uh, here in this room at 8.30. Um, please, uh, <laughs> please remember to uh, respond to Rachel and let her know if you'll be here so we make sure we have a quorum. And um, I guess with the resignation of uh, Mr. Sammons, then... Uh, we probably would not have a board member before the next meeting. Um, I don't know. I guess the commission could appoint someone on the second uh, when they meet. What my plan is, is as CMR emailed me during the meeting that it is live on our website. So for anyone watching, it is on myscambia.com. You'll email me at rwhitmeyer at myscambia.com for your resume. I'm going to collect them through the end of the month on the 31st. So with my GMR on the BCC, it's going to be past my deadline. So I'm going to post them on the second meeting to 16 for them to vote. And at that point, they'll be able to come here at the March 7th meeting. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right. Anything else? Hearing nothing, we are adjourned. Happy New Year again.